Scotty Reed here with a Black Talk Radio commentary. And I would like to comment on the case of Philando Castillo and the killer cop who shot this man. We saw it on video. There is really just no excuse for the cop being found not guilty. But in the wake of that, far too often we get that same outcome. Like I was just saying earlier today, I'm tired of living in this time loop where the names change, but the cases and the outcomes remain the same. So it's it's like we're stuck in this time loop. And I really don't have anything else to say that has not been said already. So I'm just commenting on some of the responses that I have seen. And so a typical response when we see an outcome like this is that, the system wasn't designed to produce justice or the system wasn't designed for us. And obviously that's coming from black people uh, who make that sort of statement when they say the system wasn't designed for us, the constitution wasn't written for us. And, you know, just typically the same thing over and over and over. Now, in this particular case of Fernando Castile, I don't think anybody can credibly say that the system is to blame because the system, which in this case, we're talking about the criminal justice system, because sometimes when people say the system, I have no idea what they're talking about. You know, there used to be a R&B group or, or I think it was like digital pop or something like that called the system. So who is the system? What is this system? OK, is it some kind of computer program? running uh, like in the uh, movies, the Matrix or whatnot. So what are we talking about when we say the system? Well, in this case, we're talking about the criminal justice system. We're talking about a function of government. And so I don't think that the system failed for Lando Castile. Um, the system charged the cop, which he should have been charged based on the evidence. The system... I think charged him appropriately. They didn't try to overcharge him with first degree murder or anything like that. I think the charges were appropriate and the system prosecuted the man. Now, what more could the system have done? So how did the system, how is the system to blame in this scenario, in this particular case, how is the system to blame outside of the fact that um, we're still living in a nation that has a system of slavery going on. And what happened to Philando Castile becoming a victim of the slave catcher is a symptom of 21st century slavery and human trafficking. So, but how did the system fail in this particular case? The prosecutor prosecuted. He presented a case. I wasn't in the courtroom. I don't know how strong of a case that was. And the case went to the jury. So... If there's any failure in the system, it was a failure to possibly screen out biased jury members. I do believe that there should be checks and balances put in place to make sure we're not getting people um, who've already made up their mind before they're, they've even heard the facts of the case. So there should be some kind of way. In fact, there are empathy tests out there. Um, there are a number of tests that smart people can come up with to try to scream out, screen out some of these people with biases, all right? Because in this case, it was the jury who set this killer cop free despite the video evidence um, of that crime, of that, that manslaughter of Philando Castillo. So, I mean, the only people we can point fingers at is the jury and so, you know, I already talked about some things we could put in place to try to get more competent juror members and screen out those with their uh, preconceived biases and pro-police um, positions that they come in already um, to the jury pool with. So we, you know, that's the area that needs to be focused on, in my opinion. But also... A lot of people, we complain about these juries now. This wasn't an all-white jury. It was a predominantly white jury, but you still had two non-white jury members who could have held out for justice, and they just, I don't know the reason why. They did not hold out for justice. See, we assume because people are black that they practice justice. No, justice isn't based on the skin color or anything like that. 
But I do will recognize the fact that many of us do not register to vote. Therefore, we do not get included in these jury pools. And therefore, we end up with what we've always ended up with. And that are juries who are handing down verdicts of injustice. So, I, I, you know, again, I really didn't have a whole lot to say. What, what can I say? Case after case after case, pretty much people say the same things. All right. And some of it is just based on nonsense. Like somebody said today, the only way that we can overcome this sort of thing is through separation and reparations. Well, I don't know where you're going to separate to, number one. Um, in terms of reparation, there are not enough people who are owed reparations participating in politics in order to elect the sort of people who would pass legislation that would award reparations to to uh, people for not just slavery past, but the slavery continue and the state sponsored terrorism. So I, you know. Um, I don't I really don't have any more to add to this except for the little suggestions that I made about screening jury pools. And again, the only way that a reform of the of jury pool can happen is if people get involved in the political process, if they engage the system. But you can't sit back and just blame the system while you don't never ever try to engage the system on any level. All you're doing is is just waiting for the next victim so you can say the same things over and over again about separation and reparations and this system not being designed for us and, and, and all all that typical stuff that we hear after, after every last single one of these cases. But, you know, we got to do better. We got to do a whole lot better. I'm in challenging people to become modern day abolitionists because all of this are symptoms of a slave based system. All right. All of this is symptoms. These are tentacles of slavery, even racism. Racism came out of slavery, race based slavery. You know, they introduced racism to make uh, slavery in this country apply to only Afro descended people, black people. All right. So, you know, um, become an abolitionist and let's attack slavery. Let's end slavery. Will ending slavery end all the problems that we see in society? No, but it'll be a good place to start. This has been Scotty Reed with the Black Talk Radio News Commentary. Uh, visit me for more commentary. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can uh, subscribe. Um, to our post on blacktalkradionetwork.com. You can also join our new social media community, btrcommunity.com. You can follow us again on YouTube. We're on Facebook, Black Talk Radio Network, and Twitter as well, at Black Talk Radio. All right, this is Scotty. Peace. <laughs>